Hey guys, let's get more news about Lakers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Lakers expected to make consolidation trade, report. After missing out on their free agent targets, the Los Angeles Lakers are pivoting to the trade market to add an impact player. The Athletics' Jovan Buha reported on July 16 that such a move is still in play before the new season tips off. The Lakers expect to make a consolidation trade at some point, though that could come closer to the start of the season, according to league sources, Buha wrote. The Lakers have struck out from their initial free agent targets Clay Thompson, Jonas Valanciunas, and James Harden to their backup plans DeMar DeRozan and Gary Trent Jr. Trent was the latest miss for the Lakers as the prolific three-point shooter opted to sign with the Milwaukee Bucks on a one-year veteran minimum deal, per ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski. Buha pinned the blame on the Lakers doling out player options, instead of team options, to their off-season signings last year. One of the reasons the Lakers have been unable to make any signings and had to explore trades is that four roster holdovers who were given second-year player options last summer, D'Angelo Russell, Christian Wood, Jackson Hayes, and Cam Reddish, opted in due to their performances last season and the tight free agent market, Buha wrote. Of the four players, only Russell, $18.7 million, holds value as a salary ballast in a trade for an impact player who earns similar or less money. With the four holdovers picking up their player options, the Lakers' roster is currently full, which made it impossible for them to go after Trent even if they have the $5.2 million taxpayer mid-level exception to offer. The Lakers have to offload some of them to create a roster spot and use the mid-level exception. After missing out on Valanciunas, Reddick still hopes the Lakers could get a center of a similar ilk via trade to ease the defensive burden on Anthony Davis. You certainly have to look at what I think is actually a very good roster, a very balanced roster, Reddick said in an interview with Justin Turman and Eddie Johnson on Sirius XM NBA Radio. We'd love to, we tried, but we'd love to, at some point, get another five-man, a big bruising five-man. You look at the Western Conference right now, whether it's Denver, Minnesota, OKC with what they added, certainly Memphis, they're going to be back in the hunt, they added Zach Eddy, certain matchups in the playoffs, you're going to need a lot of size. Redick wants to add size to counter Nuggets three-time MVP Nikola Jokic, Timberwolves Defensive Player of the Year Rudy Gobert and Thunder's Chet Holmgren and free agent acquisition Isaiah Hartenstein. The Lakers have beefed up Reddick's coaching staff by hiring G League Coach of the Year Lindsey Harden, according to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski. Lakers miss out on another free agent target, who signs with Bucks. The Lakers need to add talent to a team that finished seventh in the competitive Western Conference, but it doesn't seem like free agents want to go there. Coming off a 4-1 first-round loss to the Denver Nuggets, the Lakers have been patient this offseason, though some could call their approach inactive. They've added only rookies Dalton Connect and Bronny James to their roster, which lacks open roster spots thanks to player options handed out to marginal players last summer. Meanwhile, the team has lost backup point guard Spencer Dinwiddie and forward Torian Prince, who played the fifth most minutes for last year's team. It's possible Trent only wanted to play with his old teammate Damian Lillard, or that he saw a starting spot available in Milwaukee that wasn't there with the Lakers. But he's joined an expanding list of players who simply weren't interested in joining up with LeBron James and Anthony Davis this summer, including Clay Thompson, who picked the Dallas Mavericks over a larger offer from Los Angeles. Thompson went to Dallas even though his father is a broadcaster for the team. Trent went to Milwaukee, despite being a clutch sports client, the same agency as James and Davis, and the unofficial recruiter for any LeBron teammates. The Lakers' wish list this summer reportedly included Jonas Valanciunas, DeMar DeRozan, and Thompson, all of whom chose other teams. That might be disinterest, or it could be a result of Lakers' GM Rob Palinka's inability to open up any roster spots in advance. Two of those roster spots are going to players who, based on Summer League, aren't anywhere near contributing next season. 
second-year forward Maxwell Lewis had as many turnovers as made baskets in Monday's 88-74 loss to the Boston Celtics, and finished minus 23 in his 21 minutes. In Friday's blowout loss, he shot 2-4-8 with four turnovers. For a player in his second summer league about to turn 22, those are discouraging numbers. Then there's Bronny James, who also has a full NBA contract and not a two-way deal. Through two games in Vegas, James has shot 4 for 19 and gone 0 for 11 on three-pointers. Counting his two games at the California Classic, James is shooting 7 for 31, 23 percent, and has missed all 15 of his threes. He simply doesn't look like an NBA player yet, playing with enthusiasm but not enough skill or force. There's still a chance the Lakers make a trade, perhaps for clutch client Jeremy Grant of the Portland Trail Blazers. As for now, the Lakers don't seem willing or able to make any moves to improve. Lakers' Magic Johnson devastated after death of Kobe Bryant's father. A lot of the Los Angeles Lakers faithful along with the rest of the NBA world were left distraught after the news of Joe Bryant's passing. The former head coach in the WNBA and other leagues was instrumental in the growth of the game. Perhaps, his greatest contribution to the world was being a great father to Kobe Bryant. A lot of legends noticed how differently the Black Mamba was raised due to his composure and killer mentality, including Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson has not known any team in the association more than the Lakers. Every player that passes through the organization, the iconic point guard of the 1980s, probably knew them and their families. This held true with Joe Bryant and Kobe Bryant. So, it was rough for him when he received the news of Joe's passing. He outlined how great the former WNBA coach was as well as the life he lived. I'm devastated to hear about the loss of my friend Joe Jellybean Bryant, the father of Kobe Bryant. Joe was not only a talented basketball player, he was also a great coach. A lot of people don't know that he coached the LA Sparks in 2005, 2006, and 2011, he wrote. Joe started making waves when he was in La Salle. He would eventually get picked up by the Golden State Warriors with the 14th overall pick of the 1975 NBA draft. From then on, he had stints with the Philadelphia 76ers, San Diego Clippers, and Houston Rockets. He would then see his way out of the league and help his wife in raising their children. One of them, Kobe Bryant, followed his footsteps into the NBA and made an even bigger splash than he did. Joe was an exceptional human being with a radiant smile that had the power to brighten any room and a great husband and father. Cookie and I are praying for his wife Pam, daughter Sharia, and Shea, and the rest of the Bryant family, friends, and all those who love Joe, Magic Johnson added. Basketball did not stop for Joe back when he played his last game in 1983. The father of the Lakers legend still played nine years in Europe, which would explain why his children are multilingual. After that, he also started his coaching career. Joe found his way by coaching the women's basketball team for the Akaba Hebrew Academy. A year later, his college alma mater got him to coach their team. He would then resign three years later to help Kobe with his NBA draft aspirations. Eventually, Joe got back into coaching again in 2003 with Diablos. It would not be until two years after that he landed the WNBA head coaching job with the Los Angeles Sparks. In the WNBA, he helped the Sparks to two postseason appearances. He got them a conference finals finish in his first season. They would improve to a Western Conference leading record the year after, but eventually lose to the conference finals yet again. Joe retired for some time but went back in 2011. Unfortunately, he could not lead the team to a postseason berth then. His career then found him spending some time coaching in Japan up until 2015 before he finally retired for good. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Magic Johnson? Leave your opinion in the comments.